Very lucky this morning to be joined by team principal of Gazoo Racing South Africa, Glenn Hall. What a race so far. Five of your Toyotas in the top ten. You must be feeling relatively okay this morning. I think it's a good saying, relatively okay. We're a little bit disappointed we lost Yazid who I thought, honestly, were, had a good chance to win the Dakar. You can never say uh, for sure we're going to win, but uh, it was looking very, very positive. Yazid and Timo were doing a great job and really doing top stage times with relative ease in the new, uh, you know, I like Devo. So I was quite confident until uh, the start of this massive 550k stage in the empty quarter. That was a massive stage in, in all ways. Cars and bikes took a hefty toll on bodies and machines. I think it was a flashback to the kind of Moritov, Mauritanian cocktail that we used to get in the Dakar in North Africa. And uh, yeah, it really took its toll, but great, uh, great challenges for us all. And uh, our cars performed really well overall. I mean, we lost Yazid uh, not from a mechanical problem, but for a crash. So uh, these things can happen. And really, we've got uh, and the Lucas there in fourth. Yeah. Well, four, five, and then you've um, again got uh, Janil de Villiers in the top ten. How does he keep doing it? Janil understands the Dakar very, very well, and. For me, it's a little bit sad that they had some you know, navigational issues along the way because the car has been 100% reliable and uh, we, we had no damage to the car. But in the thick dust, and if you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, it's very easy to take the wrong track, end up in the wrong valley, and bang, you know, you've lost uh, 10, 15 minutes quickly. But Janil's hanging in there and Lewis, Lucas uh, Moraes and Armand, if they hadn't have had, and of course the big word if, if they hadn't have had the simple role while Lucas was literally so car sick, he was looking for a place to vomit, they would have been within two, three minutes of Logan. So uh, yeah, that's, but the race is not over guys. We've got a long way to go. We've got Loeb who's got to close on Saints at average of 0.8, 0.9 seconds a kilometre. So that means there's going to be a lot of risk at the front. People can't take it for granted. And uh, I think we've still got some more Dakar to come in the next six days. You, in one of your messages, you um, said that Loeb can still win this thing. Um, I think I said it just before the start of the uh, this big marathon stage or at the end you know during it and for sure um yeah it kind of looks like that he, he took the deficit down by a good 20 minutes so uh, yeah i would think he's favorite uh on paper obviously carlos is favorite the audis have been yeah. running much more reliably this year than we've seen before and and i don't want to miss out guy um guy and brett had a superb start to a Dakar, really um, great, great run, consistent, and there every day, which is what it's all about. In eighth place overall, leading rookie. Um, it just seems that the more, as things get tougher, the more Gar focuses completely on the mission at hand and following your briefing of get the car to the end of every stage. Well, I, I think it's a little bit. Following my briefing would be a little bit of a simple statement, but I'm not actually saying much to him now at all. Guy, fair play, the two of them are doing a great job, and I can now focus on a few other things in the team as well. So Guy's doing his thing. If they keep on doing that, the Dakar will come to them more and more every day. And uh, Sawood has had a pretty um, hectic introduction to the Dakar, that's certainly, and Seth in uh, a T1 car, or you know, ultimate car now, has also had a little bit of awakening. Uh, he's incredibly quick, but these longer endurance stages take a toll on the human, human part of the race. 
You've um, repaired Seth's car did you, um, during the day today. Will they be able to get the alignment to a point where you really want it? No, no. The, uh, we, we didn't even take the front diff out, actually, uh, of the car. All the cars are having new, new diffs just as a precaution. You know, you spend so much money getting here to Dakar and competing. Um, it, it's, uh, you have to change parts regularly if you want to have the kind of reliability we see from the Hilux. And I mean, we're, the Hilux is obviously better than many of the other cars in terms of that. But Seth's car uh, is still only 90% and we can't do anything here. It's got to go back on the chassis jig. That was a big impact and amazing that they actually made it here. And do you, um, with a, even with a, a bent car, do you get Seth to go flat out to try and get to top five stage finishes and, and score some world championship points? I can't say those are my instructions because it probably would be my fault when things go wrong. But that certainly that was my strong <laughs> advice or strong opinion. If they're not going to finish in the top five, uh, Lucas and Seth, then we're wasting our time throwing parts at the car, you know, if you want to be a, a not even, but uh, to the fact. And, and they've got to get used to driving to the pace. They're, they're more than capable and the car's more than capable. Um, I do believe overall, if I'm looking at the full picture of the Dakar, we do have the fastest car here. And uh, I think that's a general opinion of a lot of the, the top people who know about the Dakar. Yeah, I think uh, yes, he clearly showed that and Lucas's stage win clearly showed that. Mm. The balance of performance with the Audis, electric hybrid, um, cars, uh, what's the general feeling in the bubble Okay, if it was balance of performance, things would change, but actually now the new term that's taken over is called EOT, equivalence of technology, and the mathematical analysis of the first few stages showed that now the cars are very close. So we've improved quite a lot. I'm guessing ProDrive have include, improved a lot, and certainly Audi have done a lot of testing this year. So I'm quite surprised that uh, basic, when I look at the power output to the Audi's got, uh, I am quite surprised that the EOT came out so close. And I think the analysis after the last day, uh, two days in the empty quarter, might show something slightly different but uh, it's close enough to have a race, and I think that's important. And that's what you really want, just let's go and have a, a fair race um, and let the fastest car win. I think globally looking as a picture, Rally Raid is in the strongest formula of any at the moment. Um, when you compare it, of course, everybody will have a different opinion. You've got to take F1 out of it because that's a kind of different set of circumstances and rules. But uh, if we look at everything else, the size of the Dakar, the most cars and entries we've ever had, the closest racing at the front, I would say that uh, uh, things are looking pretty positive. And I wouldn't like to say we're doing a good job at the, on the FIA technical committee, but... Uh, it's not bad from my aspect. Um, it's pretty close. We just need to keep it like that for the future so it can carry on glow, go, growing. Mm -hmm. and the manufacturers have got a place to play where there's money can't just run away because there will be no more homologations for you know electric cars like the Audi in the future. Everything will be back to, shall we say, normality, thank goodness. What's the, the, the plan of the team and your strategy going forward into the next week, then? Flat out. We've got to get into the podium. We've <laughs> got to go as fast as we can. The cars aren't going to break, I don't think. So the drivers and the crews have, uh, have need to push now these six days, not make any mistakes, stay on the track, and uh, hopefully the, the Hilux will prevail and we can we can see even better results now. Uh, it's looking after this week, 
the car is looking pretty good in my eyes, so uh, the guys can keep pushing as hard as they like. And you've been battling with a with some sickness over the last couple of days. How are you feeling, Glenn? <laughs> Thank you for asking. Yeah, today is the first day I'm probably 80%, but three days ago it was not so good. I just, I'm sure the team were happy because I had no voice. So, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't <laughs> uh, give my opinion on no respect. Thank you. But now you're back for the most important part of the race. You've got your voice second week. Glenn, I, I know you pushed for time, and um, I'm told that you've got a very special lunch today. Uh, enjoy that lunch, and it's a, it really is a privilege to chat to you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, do appreciate it. And send, I think, the whole of South Africa and in race days good wishes to everybody in the team, and uh, be fast. Thank you. Great. And it feels like we are holding the SA flag pretty high. Okay. Cheers, hey. Thank you. Yeah. Well bye done. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Glenn. Bye bye. Well, the cars, he said, aren't going to break. Yeah, that's confidence, eh? Hey? Very, very confident in his cars and go flat out, which is what we'd like to hear. Oh, we're in for an exciting race. Another week's racing at Dakar 2024. Hell, what a time to be alive. Yeah. Cheers.